sacrificial offering of God through Jesus Christ on the cross has the miraculous power of freeing us once and for all from our sin of all time. Jesus doesn't have to come back next year and the next year to atone for our sins committed within the past 12 months. Jesus died to free us eternally, that means forevermore, yeah. from the death that goes along with our sin. So we can walk victoriously because we have been freed once and for all and empowered to stand as sons and daughters of God, able and capable of utilizing God's miraculous power in the world. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. This miraculous thing, this miraculous power is something that has the power of the supernatural. It is unexplained and unnatural. It cannot be fully understood with the human mind, but it's real. And as the philosophers say, it's really real. Yeah. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. Or when we look at the features of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross, we understand more about the features of the blood. This universal substance that has transformed a world. We as joint heirs with Jesus Christ have access to this all-powerful, supernatural, miraculous, transforming blood. That blood that reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. You see, the reason I am saved from sin and eternal damnation before God is because of the blood. And I and you can take comfort in knowing that we have been set free by the blood. Ah. My God, the reason I am guaranteed eternal and everlasting life with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and know that I'm going home to be with God and that I'll be reunited yeah, with my grandmother and my grandfather, my mother. Jesus in his sacrifice of his blood has indeed made all things new. We are made new creations in Christ. Ah, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How can sacrifice in my life make all the difference in the world for another man's life? How can being hung on a cross and being ridiculed and beaten change somebody else's perspective in their course in life? How can dying bring about life? Well, the gospel writer John says in John 12 that unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it cannot produce much fruit. All right. Jesus is instructing the disciples on the true call of a godly life, the miracle of a godly life. Oh, don't miss this. He says that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain of wheat. But in order for it to multiply and to touch the lives of many and to make a difference in the world, a real impact in the world, must die. Yeah. It must fall to the ground and die. Yeah. It must be used to fertilize the soil so yeah. more can grow. Yeah. Then, oh, then and only then will it produce much seed, will it produce much fruit. Then it can produce stalks of wheat. Hallelujah. He seems to be saying that life springs forth out of death. Yeah. Mm. That death can bring about a harvest. That death is the way to life, life eternal in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, he says that if you love your life and you cling to your own life, you'll lose it. Huh? But if you lose your life for the sake of the gospel, if you lose, if you let go of your life while serving God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your spirit, serving others as neighbors, then the very act of your sacrifice, of your dying to yourself, will cause you 
to gain 